Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Further North Podcast, preview podcast. How are we all feeling after that week? What a crazy time it's been. The lows were low last weekend. The lows were definitely low. Thank God for Marnie coming on the podcast and being able to, you know, just vent frustration, which hopefully represented what all of you guys think as well. But, hey, here we are, lower than ever, uh, flatter than ever, and we've got some news throughout the week to talk about. There's been a lot of chat about North. Um, Like usual, when we're bad, everybody talks about us, and the times we played well this season, nobody says a word, so it's been fantastic. Usual great journalism um, and discussion from Caroline Wilson and Kane Corns. What a surprise. The two culprits, as soon as North are bad, um, they come out punching. And uh, as soon as they were playing, well, when they were playing better through the middle of the season, uh, not a word to be seen. You can see every week uh, Kane Corns comes with his highlight package of bad North plays when they're bad. Um, and once again, doesn't even bother going to the film room when we play well. So. Unbiased journalism, fantastic. Um, luckily, there's no vendettas and we can trust the media, guys. That's something we've definitely learned, especially from those two accredited journalists. Other than listening to them whinge all week, um, it's been an interesting one. A lot of injuries coming out of the last game. And I did listen to that. Uh, our Irish friend, whatever his name is, who tells us how many injuries we have every week, Zerha looking like he's out for a year. Not a year. Jeez, that's stupid. The rest of the year, I'm thinking of Griff. And um, it looks like George is probably out for the year as well. Um, put him on ice. We're not doing anything for the rest of the year. So put him on ice. Um, and let's make sure George Wardlaw plays 15 years of amazing football for the club. Um, with Zerha, I think that's more likely to be out for, for the year. Disappointing. Probably hasn't had the best season, Zerha, to be honest. Um, I think he's been a little bit low. I'm trying to remember the last time that he had a great game, and I'm probably thinking back to the Bombers and things like that, unless I'm missing something in between. Um, But, yeah, hopefully he can come back better next year. Um, I guess next year is Zerha's last year of his contract he signed the year before, previous. Um, So will he be another one out the door? I guess we talk about that this time next year. But... Look, those two out, big outs. Um, but look, when it rains, it pours, and we may as well um, just – why don't we just injure everybody and we just play our VFL team. So not good to hear about those ones, especially for um, George, but this year's been a disaster. So, um, look, it is what it is. I think we just got to take it as it is what it is this week um, and for the rest of the weeks in the season, guys, to be honest, because um, this is the probably the lowest point of the season to be honest. Um, I'm going to do a dive into what I actually think about this probably after the season really quickly so I'm not getting too negative here. I think the only good thing to come out of this year has probably been how good George and um, Sheasel have been. Other guys like Bailey Scott, um, Larky's form, Bergman breaking into the side. I hope he comes back in and, um, yeah, things like that. So that's the news. Um, Clarkson's back as well. That's another bit of news. Uh, Round 21, coming back against the Ds. He's been checking out some under-18s and things like that. Um, Easing him back in, which I think is fine once again. He's not really going to make a difference for the rest of the year. Um, He really just needs to start implementing things, try things for the rest of the year. If we get smashed, we get smashed. Hopefully he's got a big preseason and he comes back better than ever and we can come out like we did this year, next year, but with some continuity. So, yeah, I... uh, I think that's really all that went on this week. I guess a lot of a lot of chat about draft compensations and things like that. Um, Harley Reid apparently uh, saying no to West Coast, but that isn't true. You know, I know it's strongly suggested and, you know, we can speculate, but I would highly doubt that that is true. Um, I guess the other thing is, is it Riley Sanders, this young Tassie boy, um, he's apparently a superstar going to come to North or wants to come to North because he's mates with Sheasel. So we're, uh, Sonia's already in the ear of the AFL being like, give us some help, please. Let us draft this kid. Um, look, I'll never say no to a talented midfielder, but we need key position players, not midfielders. So 
yeah, look, who knows what we're going to do in the off-season, but that's a podcast for after the season. But a lot of speculation about Ben Mackay compensation and about what help we're going to try and get from the AFL for like priority picks and things like that. So a lot of chat, nothing really to report, but a lot of chat about it. One thing I'm going to do this week, like last preview podcast, is I'm, I haven't looked at the team lineup yet. It's currently 9 p.m. on uh, Thursday night. I finish at 8 p.m. at work. I've got home, I've eaten dinner, watched a bit of the Ashes, and now I have not checked the lineup. I've not checked the extended squad for Sunday. So I'm going to give you a live reaction to my thoughts on the squad. But before I look at that, I am going to tell you what I would like to do this week, ins and outs wise. I think you know a few changes that are going to be coming. But, uh, spoiler alert, I'm not saying Aiden Core should be dropped this week. He wasn't amazing last week. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. He was better than bad, and that doesn't mean it's okay, but we don't have many more options, So, and he played okay, so he can stay. Some of the outs I would probably have this week. Let's have a look. Um, oh, I feel mean putting Lockie Young on there, but I just don't think he adds much, and I'd probably rather Bergman be in. Lockie Young hasn't done anything wrong, and Lockie Young has been fine. Um, I've, it's sort of the same as last week for me. He was fine. Didn't play amazing for me. I think Goda is someone I'd rather see over him. And I'd really like Bergman to come back in this week. Um, I think unfairly dropped. I know he was a little bit out of form, but I think he can play his way back into form. I think his form at the start of the year deserves his spot. So I will say Lockie Young, but not because he's done anything wrong just because I'd rather see Bergman in. That's a spoiler for the ins, but Bergman is going to be one of them. The next one, uh, well, I mean, let's just talk about all the injuries. Jackson Archer, I assume he's out this week. I don't exactly know his diagnosis, but I assume he's out. Um, Coleman Jones concussion probably was going to get dropped anyway. I guess the hard thing with CCJ is we don't really have any other options up forward other than Larky. There's no Zerha, no Combin. So... Would he have got a game merely because we don't have any numbers? Maybe, uh, but he's out with concussion anyway. Uh, Wardlaw's out, like we've said, and Zerhar is out. I'm not sure if Liam Shields is going to be out or not. He looked like he needed the green whistle on the ground in that game. And then he played the rest of the game and seemed fine. So I'm confused. Um, but the other out I have here is Tristan Jerry. Sherry, Jerry, I don't care. Um, he's... He needs to go back to the VFL. He needs to make sure he's hitting to advantage, making sure our team is dominating centre clearances. He needs to get that side of his game down before he's ready to play AFL football. He needs to start competing in contests, taking marks and hitting the ball out to advantage. I'm not going to sit here and say why I don't think he's great. I'm not going to say, uh, I'm not going to be negative towards him. Um, I want to try and take an approach as much as possible unless a rant needs to be had um, of trying to say what they need to work on to make it in this team. Um, we've won 10 centre clearances in two games of football since he's played and that is just atrocious. Um, I don't know if a team has ever been that low before in that stat. So Tristan Jerry, um, back to the VFL, please. Um, start taking some clunks in the forward line on the wing for an option to get us out of the back line. Um, and start hitting the ball out to our teammates' advantage and getting us more, many more clearances around the ground. So that's what he needs to work on before he's an in for me. So just to recap there, Young, Jerry, Archer, CCJ, Wardlaw, Zerha. I'm not 100% sure about Shields, but I'll just say those other guys for now. So two, uh, six, six outs, um, which only two through form. Um, or other players to come in and four out because of injury. Who would I like to come in? Well, if CCJ is going out, we need to do something with our forward line. Um, Robert Hansen Jr., it's time. Just play him. We're at rock bottom at the moment. Um, give him a go. Only one goal on the weekend, 14 touches in the VFL. Um, I think he took four odd marks or so. But last week, nine goals and f- uh, nine goals, nine touches, four goals. He's hitting some form um, for only playing a few games. He seems to be kicking goals regularly. 
and seems to be a bit of a live wire and we could really use someone like that down in our forward line. So, yeah, I assume um, I assume Greenwood's going to come back in this week as well. So maybe Greenwood can be that second semi-tall option. But let's bring Hanson Jr. in just for a run. Um, Miller Bergman, I talked about this one just before I mentioned it. Um, I don't know. He's good. He's good. Had a couple of down weeks, um, but I don't think, you know, that deserves to be dropped and banished from the team. He's played two solid games in the VFL, um, solid enough. So I think bringing him back in, he was a little bit of stability bringing it out of the back line, and that seems to be our problem since the bye. So maybe we can get a little bit of transition through him and Gota and maybe be able to move um, Sheasel forward a little bit more where he did make more of an impact. That's my thinking there. So... Bergman back in for me. Um, Will Phillips has to. Will Phillips absolutely has to come in. And I've got Greenwood here as well. Um, if Wardlaw, Zerha are out. Um, our midfield was pathetic last week. So let's change it up. Um, LDU had decent stats. But other than that, really no one else in the midfield did anything. She's all, but he's, I guess we're not counting him as a mid. Um, Phillips comes back in and Greenwood come back in for me. Greenwood laid 13 tackles. How many times I said to the close to a flag admins in that bay, in Bay 29. Jeez, it'd be great to have a guy like Hugh Greenwood in the middle right now. Um, dropping him is a travesty. He's been so good um, and it's something's going wrong why they're dropping him. It's not fair. So Greenwood back in and um, Phillips back in for me. We need some grunt in that midfield. Um, LDU, I love him. Not the toughest player, I think, in and under. He's a great outside runner and he can rip the ball out and bound away with it. But um, Phillips does a lot of good work on the ground and Greenwood will stick his head over anything. So we need a bit of toughness in there to feed it to the LDUs, to the Taron Thomases um, and all that sort of stuff. Goldstein has to come back in. Um, if Jerry's going out, Goldstein has to come back in. He's too good for the VFL. And look what our clearances and centre clearance numbers and around the ground clearance numbers have been since Goldstein's gone. They've dropped off tenfold. It's been an almighty collapse. So let's not um, disrespect Todd Goldstein anymore. Stop playing him in the VFL. He's too good. I know he's old, but he's the best option we've got. So Goldstein comes back in for me. And I'd like to give Callan Dawson a go. Seven marks again, 15 touches last week. Um, by all reports, I've only seen snippets of these VFL games because I'm working a lot of the time or out. But... Um, yeah, I think he deserves a shot. Will he play? I don't think so. Um, but he definitely deserves a shot in this defense um, alongside Mackay and Core. Um, yeah, just give him a go. Who cares? Who cares? So, recapping again. The ins for me would be Hanson Jr., Bergman, Phillips, Dawson, Goldstein, and Greenwood. A couple of other players um, that, you know, are in consideration, I guess, Aaron Hall got 43 touches on the weekend, and I know we're not going to be happy if Aaron Hall is back in, but I'm a big believer in experience and just a little bit of veteran presence out there. And look, I'm not saying I want Aaron Hall back in, but I'm not saying I'd be unhappy if he was either. So Hall, 43 touches, a brilliant game. He's way too good for the VFL. I know he butchers it a bit, but our transition off halfback is probably the worst in AFL history without looking at any stats. So we could use a player like that. Um, Charlie Lazaro is always one that's good, but never really makes an impact. Um, where you see him as the sub would be nice, but yeah, look, um, great VFL player yet to see enough in the AFL. But once again, at this point, we may as well try things. So yeah, they're the ins and outs that I uh, would be choosing. Drum roll, please. Now, let's go to the team lineups. Am I going to be really angry? Am I going to explode? <laughs> I genuinely haven't seen these yet, guys, so I'm just finding on Instagram now. Okay, the extended squad, my first time looking at this. Let's see how we go. In Daniel Howe, Hugh Greenwood, Todd Goldstein, Will Phillips, Charlie Lazaro, Robert Hansen Jr. Unreal. Out, George Wardlaw, Callum Coleman Jones, Zerha. Okay, so Jackson Archer will still be playing, I assume. Where is he? I'm trying to look for him on the. Yeah, okay, so he's on the extended bench. All right, let's react. Daniel Howe coming in. Um, eh, okay, fine. 
fine, I guess, maybe as a sub. I probably wouldn't want him to be playing the whole game, but sub. Um, Hugh Greenwood, absolutely. Todd Goldstein, absolutely. This means we're going to be seeing Jerry and Goldstein. I mean, look, we may as well try things. It's never worked in the past. I don't think it'll work, but I mean, if that, if Todd having to play Goldstein and Jerry together doesn't show you that Tristan Jerry has been very poor since he's come in, I don't know what will. Will Phillips absolutely 100% deserves it, no question there. Uh, Charlie Lazaro, yeah. Uh, I mean, that kind of means that how all Lazaro will be in the starting 22. I'd probably rather see Lazaro, but I think Howe's offers more stability. I don't know. They're sort of the same guy. Robert Hansen Jr. Let's talk about that. Very exciting. I'm so excited. Oh, that means I've got to watch it now. <laughs> no, I was going to watch it anyway. Um, yeah, that's very exciting. He deserves his chance. I think he's been really good since he's come into the VFL, so that's awesome to see. Um, and the three outs are just the injuries. Interesting. Uh, Shields still in there. Um, and Jackson Archer. I'm really happy that Jacko is still going to be in the team. Um, yeah. Okay. That's not as crazy as I thought. Nothing that's made me angry. Uh, nothing that I didn't expect either. I guess how Lazaro. I didn't expect Hanson Jr. to be fair, um, but no outs I didn't expect. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm probably frustrated Bergman isn't in this team. Um, look, I never thought Dawson was going to make it. Uh, in this team, I think he deserves a shot, but yeah, this guy's, I don't know what he's done. He's, you know, slapped someone's wife on the butt or something like that at the club. Who knows? But um, yeah, I actually got those ins pretty good. Hanson Jr., Phillips, Goldstein, Greenwood. I mean, we could have all picked that, I guess, but hey, pat on the back for me. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Who would be my full squad? Who would be my full squad? Um, I'd say how and... Lazaro, how many have we got to take out? Four? Jesus. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I want Jerry to go, but he's named in on the starting lineup, so I don't think he will. I'm not even sure. Out of these players on the bench, I mean, probably Lazaro doesn't make it. Yeah, Howe doesn't make it, but I want the rest to play. Um, I'm a sick of this Zeebel slander as well. I, I address this all the time, but zebul has been really good all year. He's had a few bad games, and now we're crucifying him. And someone like Aiden Core has had all bad games and now he played one good one and we're praising him. And I just don't think those things go together. So let's please keep our minds focused and understanding what's going on. Unless I'm just completely delusional. You guys might think I'm crazy. But yeah. Um, glad Curtis Taylor held his spot. Cooper Harvey's getting a run, which is good. Uh, Darcy Tucker, solid enough. Um, yeah. Interesting. Lockie Young's getting a run now. I'd probably bring Lockie Young out. I'd probably rather play... Bergman, but yeah, Lucky Young hasn't done anything wrong, so keep giving him a shot. Um, yeah, look, I'm not unhappy with that team, um, but with all the injuries, not stoked. Well, I, you know, my spoiler alert, I don't think we're going to win on the weekend. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see the response, to see how these guys respond after an awful performance like last week. We just need to show something. Even if it's an honourable loss this week, um, we need to show that we're not just pushovers. And we have been most of the year, except for that middle period in the middle of the season. So, yeah. All right. Um, what are we going to do now? Uh, under the microscope. Yes, my favourite new segment. Um, last week I said Colin Jones and Paul Curtis uh, were under the microscope. I thought Paul Curtis had a good game, kicked a couple of goals. Doesn't get heaps of touches uh, all the time, but he was leading up towards the wing and creating a contest, creating a marking option. Kicked a couple. He's got a lot of smarts. Um, I think he was the reason Larky kicked a goal. Um, just the ball was bouncing. He tapped it over his head instead of taking possession and just taking the tackle and getting the stoppage. Um, he's creative. So he answered the call. He's no longer under the microscope for me. Um, CCJ under the microscope, I mean... Once again, his game was awful once again. Um, I, I really want him to be good. He's one of my guys, and I'll continue to say that, um, but he has been shocking for a month or so. So anyway, under the microscope this week, this is going to be an interesting one. There's two guys that I can't really decide between. Well, I think I know, but I'm going to talk about two. The two guys under the microscope this week who need to do something 
is Taryn Thomas and Luke McDonald. Now let's go through these. Taryn Thomas, I think he's been really good since he's come back in. Oh, another bit of news. I think Taryn got cleared from the courts and he's got a fine or something like that. But I think the courts have cleared him from any wrongdoing. So that's not hanging over his head now. And he can just come to the footy club and play and get better, which I'm I'm really happy to hear. Um, you know, without getting into political issues, rightly or wrongly, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just happy he can move on and his life can improve, hopefully, and he can do the right things. But let's talk about on the field for him. That period where we were very good, that's like oh, his first game back, the Bombers, um, played good against the Dogs and things like that, made an impact. Um, he was pretty poor the last couple of weeks, and I think he's been pretty soft. Um, I know that's a harsh word to throw around in footy terms, but he needs he, – and look, he did lay a couple of tackles, but I'm more talking about within the contest, being able to push off people and not get bullied off the ball and things like that. He's got so much skill, but if you can just get that little bit of extra toughness – I really want him to hit some packs harder, to jump for the ball more, put his body on the line a little bit more. I think he's been a little bit soft the last few weeks and we need someone like that. One of the only positives for the entire game against Hawthorne was him running down the wing and he did create a goal. I can't remember. Maybe that was Larky's goal and Curtis tapped it over. I can't exactly remember. I've erased that entire game from my memory. But I remember he did make a run down the wing and it was very electric. One of the only times we actually broke the game open. So that's the ability he has. Nowhere near droppable, this guy. He's too good. But um, absolutely needs to get a bit more toughness and put his body on the line a little bit more. I hate seeing him off the halfback line too. I really don't like it. Um, I'd rather him like wing or forward or in the midfield. Um yeah, I don't like him off half back, but I just don't, yeah. The reason I don't like him off half back is because a few times when he needs to put his body on the line, he doesn't. And then it'll be a weak tackle or a weak contest and the opposition will kick a goal. Um, and he's so classy in front of goal and running up the wing and in the forward half of the ground. I think we need either him or Sheasel in there. Um, Goat is off the back line now um, and that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, that's why I'd like a Bergman in to sort of transition that ball so we can have Sheasel's and have Taron Thomas as further forward, but I guess the ball's in our back line so much that they wouldn't probably touch it anyway. Um, Luke McDonald, for me, was good last week. Good. He was good enough last week. I think an okay response. I know he kicked that one ball out of bounds, but if he didn't do that, I don't think there'd be too many criticisms on his game. Um, he's a little bit of a scapegoat at the moment, and he's under the microscope for a lot of North fans outside the podcast, from what I can see. Um, he was decent last week. Uh, he was fine. I have no problem with Luke McDonald's game against Hawthorne. Um, look, there's only so much you can do when the ball's coming in that much. But, yeah, he wasn't as rash. Um, he was better at kicking the ball out, a little bit better. He still sends that ball as far as he can. But he did hit a few targets, and it was an improvement. I'm not saying he was great, but I'm saying it was an improvement on his poor form before the Hawthorne game. Um, he's under the microscope to continue taking steps to getting better. Um, he took a step last week, a better game. He needs to take another step and have an even better game. Hopefully with someone like Jackson Archer there can free him up of half back or push to the wing a bit more and not stick him in the back line tagging someone because we know that that is not what he's good at. So, yes, they're the two under the microscope this week. We'll check back in and make sure that they're pulling their weight. And, yeah, there you go, guys. Game preview. Do I think we can win? Um... No, I don't, but I think what I want this week is just respond from that pathetic effort last week. Please respond. Let's have a look at the Saints' last results. I've just got to open the AFL app back up here. Here I am, not preparing earlier. Who did they play? Okay, interesting. So went down to the Gold Coast Suns by 26 points. They are mixing Max King, which is good for us because any forward just tears us apart, so... Who is the Saints' like third tier forward? Who's going to kick six this week on North? Let's have a quick look. Mm. Gresham, Owens. Yeah, who haven't I heard of before? Who's going to kick a lot? I've heard the name D Butler before. Uh, Dan Butler, I think that is. Look, Mason Wood. Mason Wood's having a field day. Let's just say that. Um, they did go down. They've got something to prove after losing to the Gold Coast. They've got a lot of pressure to stay in the finals. So there's definitely more motivation for the Gold Coast to win this game. Um, we're just out here for respect if there is any of that to draw back. 
Um, so, yeah, I think the Saints probably come out and do the business here. I don't know many of their players, but they're a good unit and they seem to play uh, pretty well. So I'm going to do some tips. Now, <laughs> I did get a few comments last week with how atrocious my tips were. I did say, and look, if the Lions lose by one point at the G to the Ds and I tip the, the Lions, I don't think that's a bad tip uh, because they should have done it. They absolutely should have done it. But I understand it's a loss is a loss, right? My tips, I said 100%. You can back me here if you're tipping. Copy these exactly and you'll be fine. I'm not saying that this week because my tips are usually awful. But here we go. Essendon and Western Bulldogs um, at Marvel. That'll be a good game. I'm going to say the Bombers do it. They need to respond after last week. I think they went down. Was it the Cats last week they lost to? Let me have a quick looky here. Yes, it is. Yeah, they need to respond. Um, the Dogs, yeah, they just sort of tick along and they're pretty decent. They lost against the Swans, but I think the Bombers got humiliated against the Cats. So... I'm going to say the Bombers win that one, who aren't favourites right now. It's eighth versus seventh, so that's exciting. Richmond Hawthorne, uh, Richmond do that one, no worries at all, even though we made Hawthorne look like prime Barcelona. Um, West Coast, Carlton. Uh, Carlton, you better do the job there. I don't want these Eagles catching us, even though they probably will the following week. Um, Lions, Cats in Brisbane. That will be a very good game. That will be a great game. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to... To jeez, I don't know. Oof, oof. I'm gonna tip. I'm gonna come back to that one. Dockers, Swans. Oh, I don't care at all about this game. Uh, Swans, Swans. Uh, biggest game of the round. Jeez, there's some good games this round. Uh, Port and Collingwood. I'm going to tip Collingwood. Uh, my heart says Collingwood because I don't like Port Adelaide. I kind of think Port might win it though, and shock everybody. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna tip Port. I don't like it, but I'm gonna tip Port. Um, Giants, Suns, yuck, 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 yuck. Um, Giants, they're on a five-game winning streak. Fox really loves posting up the longest streak in the AFL. I don't care. D's, Crows, MCG, D's. Then um, Crows need to respond, but um, yeah, D's. And then we're the last game of the rounds again. Oh my god, I don't know who to tip, Lions or Cats. If was it if was it the Cats or at the MCG, I'd be tipping the Cats. But the Lions are so good up there. I'll, I'll go. I'm going to back the Lions one more time. I'm going to back the Lions this week. If they don't win, I will never tip them again. So maybe not ever again. They might play North, but uh, I'll never tip them in a fifty-fifty game again. I'll always swing the other way. You heard it here first. So. Yeah, the tips are in, guys. The tips are in. Now, what I'm going to look at here is where is Nick Larky sitting in the Coleman medal? Equal equal third still. Okay, equal third. Silly Tom Hawkins has been put above. Has Tom Hawkins kicked 45 goals? Oh, my God. Anyway, um, Larky is four ahead of Oscar Allen. Uh, just to update you guys on the bet, if you don't know, I've got a bet with my co-worker, Big Ant, and uh, he has bet me lunch that... Oscar Allen will kick more goals this year than Nick Larky. So um, I'm winning the bet. Big Ant, if you're listening. He's probably not. Uh, Larky is still ahead in that bet. Thank you to the guys who are invested in this bet as well. It's nice getting the messages every week with you guys updating me if um, Oscar Allen's kicked some goals or not. So Larky needs a big week this week. He's been a little bit down. Uh, and he kicked one last week. A nice check side, Harry Mackay style. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, that's the podcast. Don't remember to follow the social. Don't remember. Don't forget to follow the socials. What are they? Instagram, Further North Pod. Um, Facebook, Further North Podcast. I'm always posting. You'll always see my emotional thoughts on there. I like to post fun stuff, sad stuff, real stuff. Who knows what mood I'm going to be in with this crazy franchise, the North Melbourne Football Club. Anyway, I'll see you guys probably on uh, either Monday or Tuesday. The podcast will be out. It is 4.40 on the Sunday, so I think maybe Tuesday. But look, it will be Monday or Tuesday, guys. Thank you for tuning in once again. I'm excited for Robert Hanson Jr. Glad Clarko's back. Go North. Stick together, guys. Maybe one day. <laughs>